Okay, so you get out the military. Go back home. Back on your bullshit. Oh, back on the bullshit. But this it get, it's, so I didn't know a lot about what my father did, right? I didn't know that he was getting stolen cars, remaking them. Since my mama was white, he put the title of my mama's name. Ain't nobody going to question a white woman selling a little car, whether or not the car is stolen. That was part of their hustle. So when I got back, he stopped doing it. When I got back, there was a preacher in town who used to come pick up all my dad's like scrap metals. And he came to me, he said, man, listen, he said, this was one of your dad's hustles. I said, I got this other group, the Black Porsche Club out of LA. And they convert Porsches, they convert 911s. You used to buy an old one, like a 1970. And by this time it was like, what, 1983, 1984. And go steal an 83, 84 and switch that bitch over. Hmm. 19, I'm riding around California with a convertible motherfucking 911. Pocket full. Come on, man. Got but got busted again. It was, Bro, you had the worst luck. You had the best and the worst luck. You had the best and the worst luck. But got busted, got busted again because I was up for two days snorting that shit. That crank. And I thought that I had put the put that car out. You know, after you, you cut it up. And I thought it put out, and it caught back on fire. Wow! And that's when we got busted. And the guy that so uh, crank is like, well, just like some, is it like a speed? Yeah, some shit. Uh, keep, just keeps you up. Yeah, you like yeah, a jittery yeah, type yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I uh, got busted again, and the guys that again, I have old school values. I'm the only one that got busted. All the rest of the the folks that I was doing it with. They weren't there with me when I got busted. And the one guy who actually used to go out and steal the cars, he had already been, he had already picked up two charges. He had been to prison twice. And at that time, they had the three strikes you're out. So if he got caught again, he was gonna do life in the penitentiary. So when I got busted, I took the charge all by myself. Hmm. I didn't tell on nobody. So when you get that charge, how about do they give you time or you or you get to yeah. you get skate? You get the time on this one. But, but wait, this shit is crazy. <laughs> so I get the time. I got five years. Damn. They send me the chino. So when I get the chino. Again, I mean, everybody know nudie, but just paint cars. So they put me in the paint and body shop. Ah oh, shit. Wait a minute. So I'm in the paint and body shop, and right next door to the paint and body shop is where they used to keep the dry storage. Like coffee, canned goods, and coffee in the penitentiary is huge. So I had found a way where I could take out a section of the paint booth. I can crawl over the dry stores, I can steal coffee, then bring it back in. So when I used to paint a car, I'd get that bitch foggy. You can't even see in there. And I had all the bolts out already. So all I had to do is knock it out real quick, go in there, grab coffee, come back, hang that little panel back up. I was selling coffee while I was in prison. No shit. Then the warden, the warden, he finally figures out who I was. So he brings his old BMW in to get it painted. So, you know, of course I'm a thief. He brings in, first thing I'm gonna do is go through that, through his car. See what he got going on. See what he got going on. I found a loaded 38. No shit. Even the guards don't have guns in prison. So now you got the strap inside the- Inside there. And so I started thinking, I started thinking, I'm like, come on, man, come on. Are you tempted to like, do I take this? Do that's I not what, take that's it? That's what's going through my mind. Do I take it? Do I not take it? Do I leave it? Do I? At this time, I was only in there for about five or six months. And I ain't had no problems. Like I said, I knew, I knew all the brothers. I knew all the essays. They spent all their cars. I wasn't having no problems. It was all good for me. Yeah. I knew everybody. I knew all the rules. You know what the fuck to do. You know what not to do. Mind your business. Keep your head down. And go on about your business. So I find this 38, and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? So next morning, I went there, and I told the guard, come here. I said, Warden's 38 is in the car. I said, now you're going to find my fingerprints on it because I touched it, but I left that bitch there. About an hour later, the guard came back, and he was like, Brooks, go pack your shit. I thought I was getting transferred. And I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have ever even said nothing. Motherfucker walked me right on out to the administration office and said, you going home today. What the fuck, bruh? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so how long were you in at this point? About six months. You get five be, years. I was supposed to do five years. 
Six months in, because you decide to do the right thing, I'm out. you get to go home. Favor. Wow. So he said, I get go go report. All you gotta do is when you get out, go report to your parole officer. So they put you on a parole and you had yeah. the stipulation. So the, the natural thing or the things you should do is go report to your parole officer. Nah. <laughs> you gonna go fuck off. <laughs> Not nudie. I had, a, I had a friend of mine, I was out about a week, I had a friend of mine said, man, I'm going to Miami. They got good cocaine down there. Well, nigga, I'm riding with you. So y'all drive from Cali down to Miami? To Miami? And got down there. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.